Hey guys, welcome back to Tracy's Place and welcome back to another meal prep video. Today I am here by myself. I know not everybody has that luxury all the time and I usually know when I'm home alone, no distractions. So I'm going to take advantage of this time and do a meal prep for the week. Now, like I said, I know not everybody has that luxury of cooking while everyone's gone. You may have little ones. You might be running to a soccer practice or football, baseball, dance class. Um, you may have to get up early and do it in the mornings when people are asleep. You might have to do it during your kids nap time or on a Sunday when you're off. Anyway, whenever you can do it, it's best to prep everything. Take a, a good 10 minutes and prep things before you get started so you're not fumbling around and it's taking longer than it should. Now, right here I have my meal prep dishes or my containers. I have round ones here. I got these at Ollie's. Uh, I know not everybody has an Ollie's, but you can find these a lot of places. Walmart, Target, Amazon, Amazon. So I will link some that are the same as mine or very similar down below in the description box below this video. These are BPA free, freezer safe, microwave safe dishes. And I also have the rectangle ones here. So I have four of those, but I don't need the other two. There's 10 of these here. So this is 10, 10, so that's 20 round ones and two rectangle ones. So I have 22 containers for 22 meals here. And you can freeze these. And some of these I will be putting in the refrigerator for the next couple of days. So have my containers out there are washed and clean of course I have utensils out here I have to get a few more out but I have my knives out and I have to get some spoons out but I have my meats out I have salmon today I have ground turkey I have a rotisserie chicken from Sam's I have rice. I also have leftover rice already that's still basically fresh. It just made it, uh, was it yesterday? I am going to mix these two together, most likely. I love mixing these two together. They taste really good. And I just put um, a little bit more salt on them or you can put whatever seasoning you want to. This already comes the creamy chicken season, but because it's being mixed with the plain rice, you might need a little bit more seasoning. seasoning. But, you know, go with what you and your family like. I also have asparagus I have out here. I have butter. I have yellow squash, green zucchini, mushrooms, the white rice, like I said. I have sweet potatoes, white potatoes. And these are sweet baby broccoli. I call them broccolini. And I believe that's the real name for them. But some people call them broccolini. Some people say baby broccoli. So whichever one. I, I say broccolini. Um, I have Brussels sprouts. I have, I think I already said mushrooms. I have this Fiesta style vegetable packet here. It's not a steamable, so I'd have to prepare this in a, uh, a pot or you can do it in the microwave if you want, but I prefer to do it on top of the stove. This is a steamable, so I'm going to be putting this in the microwave and steaming these. So that is everything that I have here. I just wanted to bring you all along for this. I have here some basil. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that today or not. I'm thinking about doing one of the meals to be a spaghetti bake. So if I do, I'll be using that. I have rosemary, thyme, garlic, onion, green onion. That came out my garden. Uh, let's see. This is more green onion. And I'm also going out to my herb garden to get some cilantro. The thyme came out of my garden and the rosemary and the basil did too. We are growing onions, but the onions are not ready yet. We also have green peppers. They're very small. They have to get a little bit bigger. So this one I did buy from the grocery store. I'm upset about that, but anywho. <laughs> and then I have my garlic. So now what I am going to do is prep everything so that when I get going good I don't have to stop and go back to the step of preparation I want to prep everything so I already started with that now I'm going to slice up my onion my pepper I'm going to crush my garlic and I have little ramekins also that you can put your crushed garlic or your whatever you have prepared you can put them aside in a ramekin um, I'm going to wash off my salmon and cut it 
I am going to season my ground turkey because I'm going to be making two things with this. I'm going to be making meatballs and meat and loaf. And then I'm going to slice my zucchini. I'm going to slice the yellow squash and I'm going to clean these, clean the asparagus, you know, do all that stuff. Peel. Oh, I wanted to tell you all this. Now, everybody is different. I like to microwave my potatoes first. It just saves a lot of time. I do not have a lot of time. This is not the season in my life where I have a lot of time. So real quickly, I just like to rinse them off, pat them dry. I put olive oil on the skin. I prick the potatoes and I do the same with the sweet potatoes too. And I microwave them until they are tender. And then I do whatever I'm going to do to them. If I'm going to fry them, I, I do that after I do that preparation. But it just cuts down on so much cooking time. Also, have a garbage bag on hand. You can have two. Actually, if you're making a week's worth of meals, you are going to need more than one little garbage bag. So I've already started this one. I have to get another one out. All right. So I'll be back to show you what everything looks like once I get it prepped. So I wanted to cut over here real quick and show you guys what I generally use for seasonings. These are my seasonings. They're not my only seasonings, but this is my staple. These are my go-tos. I know everybody uh, cannot always use the exact things that they see in the videos, and that's okay. Everybody's at a different price point. Some people can afford some things. Some people cannot. I always want to be sensitive to people and their pockets. Some people frown upon using margarine, but sometimes people are just at that point where they, they can just barely get margarine, and that's okay. If you can afford to get that 99 cent pack of margarine, don't feel bad. Sometimes butter is $3.50, $4 for a you know a, a pound so that's a lot for some people and if you cannot do that that is okay do what you can do um, a lot of people can work magic with salt pepper and seasoning salt and some garlic powder you go girl <laughs> all right so this is my seasoning repertoire I have here Italian seasoning Obey seasoning roasted garlic black pepper onion powder garlic salt and you guys, they are out of this at about every store that I have gone to. This is the McCormick Sea Salt, Black Pepper, and Garlic. This is my go-to, but they are out. They are out, so I'll wait till I find it. And that's when I got this, the Garlic Herb, Black Pepper, and Sea Salt. So this is good, but it is a different flavor. It is a different taste in this, so I can't wait to find this again. I also have Blackened Seasoning, Garlic Powder, Cajun Seasoning, Paprika, and this is my favorite 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 other than this i love this mccormick brown sugar seasoning i think it's called actually it has another word on it i cannot remember i'll put it right down below right here right now so this is what it's called and it's amazing it has a little sweetness to it it just adds so much and i just love it uh lemon pepper and i already said this i think the all-purpose garlic herb black pepper and sea salt Lowry seasoning salt. I like sea salt instead of the regular table salt, but you can use what you have. And then I love this chicken bouillon, this nor de pollo, like that. Um, and then I like liquid smoke also. So those are my staples. Also, something that cuts down on time and is just to me is a lifesaver are these Sam's rotisserie chickens because they're already ready. They're only $4.99. Well, here in my city, my Sam's only charges $4.99 for a whole roasted chicken. That is amazing to me. So, anyway, love it. And a lot of times, what I'll do is the legs and the thighs. I'll use for a per for one person, you know, one section for a person, then another leg and a thigh for another person, the wing and the breast, and then the other wing for a breast. So that's four. That goes into four meals. And then after that, I use the rest of the meat to make some other kind of dish out of it. So that's that's wonderful to me. Before you start your prep, you want to go ahead and turn your oven on. I'm going to turn it on to three. 60 that's what i usually bake on i know people the standard is 350 but i do 360. put it on what you like to put it on
So here are the potatoes. All I did, like I told you before, was microwave them to get them soft, dice them up, and then I put them, some of them I left skin on, and some of them I completely, basically, um, peeled. Dice them up, put them in the skillet with onion and rosemary, and I seasoned them with Italian seasoning, salt. I'm gonna put a little pepper in here too. Uh, I put the um, brown sugar bourbon, yeah, brown sugar bourbon, that's what it's called. Brown sugar bourbon seasoning in here, and I'm gonna let them brown, and then turn them brown on the other side, and then take them out. And I'm taking the potatoes out now, and yes, I did cook them in the salmon, um, olive oil butter mixture that the salmon was cooked in. You know how you make fish and fries or fish and chips? Yes, the fish oil flavors the fries plus the seasoning that you put on the fries, yum. I also at the end, you guys, put a little green onion and thyme in there because I just want it to warm through. It doesn't have to, um, I don't want it to burn, so I just put it in there last minute with half of the potatoes and then I'm gonna put this section here in with all the potatoes. I also went ahead and made the Fiesta vegetables and I put Italian seasoning, butter, a little bit of salt, and I think a little bit of Cajun, yeah, a little bit of Cajun seasoning in it and they are delicious. All right guys, so you wanna start with your meat first and i like to do that because while it's in the oven or cooking whatever your meat is doing it's easier to then prep the vegetables because they don't take as much time as the meat so once you get the meat out of the way you kind of sail through this a lot faster okay, so i have washed off my salmon patted it dry i put my olive oil on a piece of aluminum foil and i'm going to season this and then i'm going to put the back of the salmon on it and just kind of swish it around a little bit that way the back of it is seasoned uh, i don't tend to eat my skin but some of my family do so i like to season the back of it also so since the back is seasoned once i put it down and kind of you know smush it on there a little bit and get the seasoning on the back it's already face up so then i put olive oil and butter on it and season it side of the salmon is seasoned now I'm going to put butter on here I know I should be using a pastry brush or you know poultry brush or whatever but I cannot find mine so I am using my finger my fingers my hands are clean and just a reminder I am cooking for my family and I know a lot of people will say well that doesn't matter I know it doesn't matter. I love my family more than y'all. So <laughs> I make sure that everything is clean to my satisfaction and my hands are clean. Just wash my hands again. And you do want to wash your hands throughout this whole process because touching raw meat is not safe. And then especially, um, you know, putting it right on something else. You want to wash your hands after you touch and handle raw meat and uh you know before you touch your vegetables or whatever else you're doing always wash your hands throughout the process and i am just going to be using this butter for the salmon and yes i should have poured this out first and not be putting my finger back and forth i should have just poured it all on the salmon and dabbed it around after i did that i did not y'all i was talking to y'all and forgot about what i was doing <laughs> but anyway this is just going to be used for this meal so now I'm going to season the flesh side of the salmon. You don't want to over season salmon. It is a mild fish. Just want to give it some, mm, some flavor. Even though I'm using four seasonings, I'm not going heavy on the season. I hope it doesn't appear like that on camera, but I'm not over seasoning. And I do not like to waste a thing. 
I get some of this seasoning from off this aluminum foil here and dab it on as well. And we have the salmon all seasoned now. So to get skin seared salmon, basically crispy skin salmon, you want to put the skin side down first. Put it to the edge as much as possible. We have five pieces and I want them to all fit if I can make them fit. You want the fattest part of the salmon in the middle of the skillet where most of the heat is. This is a huge skillet. So some of the skillet is hanging off of the eye. So you do want to okay, once you get it set, you don't want to move it. So let's get it set now. And what I did was cut this last piece. I cut it in half. And we're gonna put it here and here. Perfect. You want the salmon to cook at least four minutes on each side. So I'm gonna kind of jiggle it around so that you don't disturb the skin. Okay. And then you want to flip it like so. You do the same thing for each piece. I had to flip that with the spatula. It's okay. I'm going to take these little pieces out at about one and a half minute because I don't want them to get overdone. Salmon back over. Ooh, look how pretty that is. I'm going to put these other two pieces back in. And this is going straight in the oven. I'm going to leave it in for about eight minutes. And here's the salmon out of the oven. The potatoes are out of the microwave. And I am going to make some honey butter out of this leftover butter that I was basting with. I'm going to put a little honey in there. I'm going to warm it up. I'm going to put it on top of here. Put it back in the oven for about a minute and a half or two. I usually make a citrus honey butter sauce, but I don't have any oranges today. And I just don't want to use lemon for some reason. So I'm just going to put the honey butter over the fish. Right now I'm gonna start on my meatloaf and meatballs. And the first part of the seasoning will be all the same and then I'm gonna section out the meatballs so it'll be separate from the meatloaf because it's gonna be a little different after a certain point. So I'm gonna use cream of chicken and usually this is a staple in everyone's closet or pantry. So I'm gonna use and this is a teaspoon, so I'm using three dollops. That's about two tablespoons. So I'm using that. Okay, I'm back. I had to do something else before I finished this, but I am going to put some Lowry's in. I always say nothing is better in turkey than Lowry's. It takes that turkey, turkey taste out of it if you know what I'm saying you know how people say gamey things are gamey there's a turkey taste that I do not like um, 
when turkey is made with when it's not seasoned good. So Lowry's to me seasons it up the best. So I put Lowry's in there. This is close to two and a half pounds of turkey. So I'm going to use one fourth cup of water. That helps the moistness of the turkey. You don't want dry meatloaf or dry meatballs. So I'm going to put in some of the brown sugar bourbon seasoning. A little bit of the all-purpose garlic and herb, sea salt and black pepper. And I'm just eyeing this. You can put how much you want. I'm gonna put a little bit of garlic salt. I'm gonna put a little bit of honey in. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I know I didn't quite say it right. <laughs> Put a little bit of that in there. I'm going to put a little bit of ketchup in. I've sauteed some green bell pepper and some onion. I'm going to season these up a little bit and I'm going to add them to my meatloaf and meatball mixture. Okay, I have it seasoned and in it goes. I'm going to add this carefully because I know I should not be using this metal fork in this nonstick pan. Now I'm going to mix this all up. And the only thing different I'm going to do is with the uh, meatballs, I'm going to add some chicken broth. Mm -hmm. That's it. They don't have to be seasoned too, too different, but the chicken broth, and that's going to be from the bottom of the rotisserie chicken. I actually had two rotisserie chickens, one I've mostly already used, but it still has some juice at the bottom of the pan. So I'm going to use that in the meatballs, and I'm going to add a little bit of pepper in there. Okay, I'm going to get this semi mixed up, and now I'm going to add in my cracker crumbs. That's going to help hold it together and cracker crumbs just adds a good mm, to meatloaf and even meatballs. Now I'm going to add the cracker crumbs. It's about one fourth to one third of a cup. I didn't measure. I'm going to mix that in now. All right, I have my meatloaf meatball mixture all together. Now I'm going to take just a little bit over half, just a tad. And I'm going to put it in this dish right here. I'm going to put some olive oil in the dish. So it won't stick. I know you can't see that, but here. There you go. And I'm going to put that olive oil, smear it all around the bottom. And I'm going to take that. And you can make your meatloaf any way you want to. This is not my original meatloaf recipe. I use a different recipe usually, but I was doing this on the fly and I was doing two things at once, the meatballs and the meatloaf. So I wanted to, you know, make it a little different. I'm going to mold this into my meatloaf. You don't want it super tight because you don't want it to be dry. You want to just kind of loosely mold it. I want it to be fairly even though, so it cooks evenly. So fairly uniform in size. I don't want it humped in the middle and low on the sides. I want it even all over. And there we go. I'm going to put that glass top on. I'm going to put it in the oven at 360 degrees for about 40 minutes. And then I'm going to take it out and see what it's looking like. Because each time I make a meatloaf, a lot of the times it's different sizes. Sometimes I may make a pound, a pound and a half, or two pounds. So it calls for different times as far as cooking. All right, guys. So now I'm going to mix up the meatballs. I'm going to add in this chicken broth and then a little bit of liquid smoke. 
I forgot to say that. A little bit of liquid smoke. I'm adding the pepper, like I said, these two, the pepper, the chicken broth, put it just a tad bit of liquid smoke. And I'm gonna put in a little bit of this mandarin teriyaki sauce, just enough to make them, mm, it's gonna be so good. So I only added about a tablespoon. I'm just gonna add a couple of drops of the liquid smoke. You do not need a lot of that. I'm gonna add in the chicken broth. And remember, it already has the other seasonings in it. I'm just gonna add a little bit of pepper because I didn't add pepper into the meatloaf. So that's that. I'm gonna mix in everything, get my meatballs all seasoned and then formed. I'm gonna get that all incorporated and then get my meatballs formed and I'll show you what I do next with them. So now I'm putting some flour on this aluminum foil and what I'm going to do is form them in balls and kind of roll them a little bit in the flour and get them into the pan. It's just olive oil, so it's gonna be like a soft kind of fry. And then I'm gonna finish them in the oven and bake them off. And I don't wanna put a lot of flour on each one of these because I just wanna get a coating on the outside. I don't want a big thick crust of flour, just a little coating so that you know, cause it's kind of mushy. It's a little mushy, so. Just wanna make them workable. Now I'm gonna add these. our prep done we have our onions sliced and we have our green onion thyme rosemary basil I'm still not sure if I'm gonna use my basil yet because I'm not sure if I'm gonna do like the spaghetti bake not sure yet I have my green bell pepper already diced up I have my broccolini prepared my um, the yellow squash is under there but this is the green zucchini on top Brussels sprouts I'm gonna drain those and uh, that's the asparagus and mushrooms. So right now I am going to put my asparagus on this big baking sheet. I'm gonna put several things on at one time. Put all of that on there, cause this is gonna be roasted in the oven. I'm gonna drain these, dry them, cut them, put them on here so I can get them seasoned and olive oiled, and then they're gonna roast with the asparagus. And I have everything placed evenly. It's not spread apart real far, but it will get roasted and it'll be a soft roast. I don't like hard roasted vegetables. So this is just perfect for me. I even put onion on the top and I seasoned it with the McCormick brown sugar bourbon seasoning, some of the Italian, the garlic salt, and a little bit of salt. And I'm about to put some pepper on it and then I'm gonna put it in the oven. I am going to roast these on 400. So the veggies have been roasted and they look really good. And when they first come out of the oven, you want to kind of stir them around so that the garlic is evenly distributed too. Because I put the garlic in, I'm sorry I didn't show it on camera, but you want to put the garlic in, I would say about seven minutes before they're done. and. When you take them out, you just want to stir them around. I see they get perfectly roasted and browned in there as long as you coat them with olive oil. The meatballs are getting ready. I'm going to turn them as they get ready on each side. These meatballs smell amazing. They really do.
So I have flipped the meatballs and now I'm flipping them on the sides. I'm going to flip them on the other side and they'll be ready to go in the oven just for about 10 minutes. I am now going to put the carrots in the microwave. These are the steamables. And they go in for about six to seven minutes. I am now just going to put them in this aluminum pan and put them in the oven. And if they get a little brown on one side, it's okay. Now the meatloaf is out of the oven. I'm going to make a ketchup and barbecue sauce mixture to put on top. And the zucchini and squash and onion. Metley is in the pan. So I'm going to put Italian cheese on top of the asparagus. I sit it back in the oven just enough to melt, probably about four minutes. We love Italian cheese on top, or even Parmesan cheese. I don't have Parmesan today, but Parmesan is amazing on this. And let me disperse this evenly. And there we go. I'll sit it back in the oven for about four minutes. So I've made the topping for the meatloaf, the meatloaf sauce, and it's just barbecue sauce and my uh, ketchup. And I just mix equal parts together and just smooth it on top and stick it back in the oven for about eight minutes. You can also, if you want, put a little bit of this golden juice from the meatloaf pan in there a couple of tablespoons and that will make it taste even the more savory. And I'm not gonna put it on the whole thing cause not everyone in my household loves the sauce on the meatloaf. So I'm just gonna put it on a little bit over half. And there you go. Sorry, oh, the pan looks so messy, but that's just the way it cooks up. And these are ready, the squash and zucchini. Again, you make modifications for people who don't like certain things. I put mushroom. I made a little well right in the middle towards the end. Sauteed some mushrooms right there in the middle of the pan. And then I divided it. And the mushrooms went on this half. And then the person that doesn't like mushrooms has this. So it works out well. And to season this, I put salt, pepper, Italian seasoning, and McCormick's garlic and herb seasoning. I'll show you. I'm sorry, it's the roasted garlic and herb. Also, you guys, I put a little bit of honey. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. I put just a little bit of honey. Maybe a teaspoon on that side, half teaspoon on this side. And honey just makes things taste so... Mm. It's just like adding sugar to spaghetti or to chili. If you add honey to different things, it just makes it taste savory and good. Not to everything now, but certain vegetables and certain sides, just yummy. Now I'm making the rice. And I mixed the Knorr creamy chicken flavored rice that you saw before. Mix it with some white rice, about equal amounts of the white rice. So I made a recipe for this before. I'm going to put it at the end of this video. So I just took the rice out of the microwave and it needs to go just a little bit more. Also, in addition to the rice, because you know it's already chicken flavored mixed with plain white rice. So I'm going to take some of this Nor Bouillon, this de pollo. And I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here. I just put like a teaspoon or less of this in this little cup and I'm gonna to close to fill it with water, stir it and then mix it in with the rice, stir it some more for more chicken flavor since it has the plain rice mixed in. So now I'm about to make my broccoli, mushroom, onion and garlic medley. It is so good. I mean broccolini, not broccoli. Broccolini or baby broccoli. It is delicious and I'll show you how to make it.
I already have the onion going and I use the same pan as I used the, uh, or I made the zucchini in. So that's why it's looking like that. No point in dirtying up dishes if it'll be fine. So I have them in this large Gnostic skillet. I'd already sauteed this onion. As you can see, they're already caramelized. I'd already sauteed these in the same pan that the zucchini came out of. And if you remember, I put like the honey in there and it was all mm, yum, yum, yum. So I just put the onions in there, sauteed it, and it has that glazed seasoned taste on there. And it's just gonna add so much flavor to the broccolini. So, I'm gonna get this all sauteed together. And it's just in about three tablespoons of olive oil. And a little bit of the water has run off of the broccoli too that you see in there. So it's a little bit of olive oil and some water, maybe a tablespoon of water mixed in with that olive oil. I'm just gonna saute this until it starts getting tender. I'm going to cover this up so it can steam. Okay, we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. Uh, the liquid has evaporated out. And so now it's kind of searing, I guess you want to say. And that's where it gets that taste from the um, little bit of olive oil. There's a tad bit of olive oil left, but it's just kind of semi-frying, if you will. So it's going to get that good char on there just a little bit, but as it's doing that, we're going to add the mushrooms. And we want to add some olive oil in there. An extra virgin olive oil, of course, is very good for you. You don't want to overdo it necessarily. I know that looked like a lot, but it was not because there's nothing in there anymore. And make sure you get good extra virgin olive oil. There is a difference. There is a difference. Read up on that. The difference between extra virgin olive oils, the different kinds of extra virgin olive oils. They have organic and then some that are cold pressed and this, that, and the other. You want the best one. So we're going to let that go. We're going to cover it up and let that go for a few minutes before we add the garlic. Oh, and I've already seasoned with the garlic herb and black pepper sea salt. And I'm sorry, it's so hard to show every everything because I'm really actually cooking for my family. So the, after the meat goes and you're getting all the sides together, it goes fast, y'all. So, um, and what I mean by that is I didn't have a chance to show like every single, single step. So what I basically wanted you to get the gist of is the gist of the recipe plus how to put the meals together. So also I did the brown sugar bourbon, a little bit of this Italian seasoning, and some garlic powder. Let me some garlic powder. So I stirred this together. Now we're going to cover. Let that steam a little bit. I'm going to turn it down to medium low, like in between medium and low, and let that go. So this is what my stove and side area is looking like. It is a hot mess, <laughs> but I'm actually cooking and cooking so many things. It's just, it was just impossible to clean totally as I went. So this is what it's looking like. And then that's what the island's looking like. So I'm starting to plate some things together, but I'll show you more of it as I go along since I'm, I'm toward the end of the cooking process. So as I put it together, I'm going to bring you along. All right, you guys, I'm going to put this garlic, my remaining garlic in. I know this looks messy, but I've used this through the whole process of putting it through my other dishes. So I saved some garlic for this dish because it is just amazing with garlic. So it's broccolini, mushrooms, onion, and garlic. Oh my goodness. So good. And it's healthy very very helpful you can even put more garlic in if you want wow 
That smells so good. Okay, so I put the garlic in. Now I'm going to put honey in. This tastes good with this little sweetness of honey. Put in about a tablespoon of honey. Get that incorporated in with the broccolini, onion, mushroom, and garlic. Mm, mm, mm. And the other seasonings that I already put in. So, so, so good. So this is going to be a side. And then also part of a main dish. If I can, if I have enough of everything left over to make it, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I just tasted it and there wasn't enough honey in it. So I put another, about a teaspoon and a half in there. So taste as you go along. That way you can tell how you like it. I'm also going to put a little salt in here. And that's the sea salt. And we should be good to go with that. But like I said, taste as you go along because you may have put in a different amount of broccolini than I did. I put in three bunches. But you might have a different amount. So you have to just taste as you go along. That's just what good home cooks do. I don't always do strictly by the recipe. So... Do I need any more salt? Nope, we're good. All right. I know one of my sisters, probably both of them, screaming, no more salt. <laughs> so, mushroom overboard. Yum, yum, yum. Okay. So, I'm going to cover that up and I'm turning it down to low. Really, really low, almost warm, warm, between warm and low. I'm just going to let it go for about three to four minutes, and I'm going to turn it completely off. Now, what you could do with these sweet potatoes is you could cut them in half like this and put a half of one on each person's plate. Or, like I'm going to do, I'm just going to hold them out. Make sure they're good and tender first. Hold them all out and then season them how you want to. I'm putting brown sugar, vanilla, a little bit of almond flavoring. I love just a hint of almond. Uh, I'm putting butter and honey in it. So it's going to be amazing. And I'm going to show you a little bit as I go along. Okay, let me put you all a little closer. I hope that you all can see it. But I'm going to put a little bit of salt in here. And I really need to be using a fork. I'm going to have to get... So this is like two tablespoons of butter. Just a little bit of salt like that. Ground cinnamon. I use... Let me see if I can make that focus. I use organic ground cinnamon. I think I got this from Kroger's, if I'm not mistaken. About a half of a teaspoon and then brown sugar let me try to pour this out i'm being lazy and not getting a spoon but oops i'm about to do too much i just want to do like a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar i want to do some about a teaspoon of vanilla I don't think that was quite a teaspoon, but yeah, I'm gonna have to get get it together with my little DIY measuring here. <laughs> I know y'all be like, Tracy, uh, that was more than what you said, or either that was less than what you said. So anyway, about a half a teaspoon of almond extract and some honey. Let's see if I can. Mm, that's about a tablespoon. Okay. Okay. Let me get that stirred in there. Now, you can use as much or as little of anything that you have seen here today. Anything you have seen me do. If you think it's too much, use less. If you don't think it's enough, use more. Taste as you go along. That's the best way that I can tell you to do it. Especially for new cooks, taste as you go along. 
and especially if you're doing it for your family sometimes you might be a little squeamish doing it for um if you have guests because you don't want to contaminate and you know COVID going on and going on still so you don't want to do too much tasting but as long as you use separate spoons you don't double dip do not ever double dip you all that is yeah that's nasty don't do that <laughs> okay you get germs and other people's food stuff like that now you can bake a potato from scratch in the oven if you like to uh on 350 or 360 for one hour i can't say that mm. I don't know how much better tasting or different it would be. I just like going the fast route. I might try it one day, but this tastes delicious. Delicious. I have one more thing to do, and that is um, getting the chicken, the rotisserie chicken cut up and plated, and then we'll be good to go. I will be finished with everything. All right, guys, so I cut this chicken up off of this rotisserie chicken from Sam's. I know that looks icky. So, um, but anyway, put it in here with the chicken juice from the bottom of the pan. Um, there's bell pepper, thyme, rosemary. I seasoned it with this all-purpose seasoning, the garlic herb and black pepper sea salt, and the brown sugar bourbon seasoning, a little bit of pepper, and these are just thyme sprigs, yeah. So that's just the flavor. I'm about to get some garlic. And I forgot to go out in my herb garden and get some cilantro. So I think I'm going to run out there. I think it's raining too. Oh my goodness. So anyway, y'all, yeah, it's, it then got dark. This took a couple of hours or quite a few hours. And then longer if you're doing a video like I am. So it could take just three hours. Some as little as two, depending on the meals you're cooking. But I was making some elaborate stuff somewhat. It takes about a total of three hours, but like I said, mine is longer because I'm filming. So, all right, I'll be back. And you guys, I did end up running out to my herb garden on the patio, getting the cilantro and putting it in the dish. The cilantro makes such a big difference. It has a bright, fresh taste to it, and it just makes all the difference. It is so, so good. All right, guys, so I am done. I have such a big sense of satisfaction. I cannot tell you because I know I'm not gonna be all frazzled this coming week and everything. I will just be able to get my work done, be able to zip here, be able to zip there, and know that dinner is taken care of and that I can just warm it up quickly and everybody can be happy. So let me undo these and show you what I have. All right, guys, so I am finished. Here are all of the meals, enough for one week. I'm so excited. It took quite a few hours, but it was well worth it because I will not be stressed next week. So let's start over here. I have salmon, sweet potatoes, asparagus with Italian cheese and seasoning on it. Yum, yum, it has garlic and also mushroom in it. So I have four of those um one of them has potatoes because not everybody likes the sweet potatoes so potatoes for isaiah and then here we have just two meals then these will be for lunch or either when we are on our way quickly to isaiah's game uh i have this oh you'll see you should well you saw in the video it is basically a goulash type of throw together but it is so so good it's like a one pot meal but i had to split it up because i don't have the containers that don't have compartments in them so i have to get some of those but anyway these are basically like a one pot meal and then i have three shrimp in each one and i just have two of those that are most likely be for me and my husband and then i have rotisserie chicken potatoes and this is the broccoli mushroom, garlic, and onion, medley, so good. So I have four of those, but one of them has rice instead of potatoes. Shaylin's not a potato eater, it's not her favorite, so I gave her rice. And then I have the meatballs, the meatballs here, and then I have Brussels sprouts and the rice with cheese on them. So I just sprinkled the cheese on at the end. 
I didn't cook it in there because it would have been a, a soupy, gobby mess. So when we reheat them, that's when it'll just melt all nice and gooey on the rice. And it'll be a cheesy rice, a nice, savory, cheesy rice. Over here, I have meatloaf. And then Isaiah doesn't care for the sauce on his. And then we have carrots and rice, the savory rice, seasoned rice. And then we have here four meals that are all different because I didn't have enough of this. And my husband does not like that. I gave him this tonight as part of his dinner. And he was like, uh -uh. no, he didn't like the beans mixed in with the vegetables. My, it, he, it wasn't his favorite. So this one will be mine. I'll eat this with the shrimp. And then whoever wants this can have this. This is garlic bread, shrimp, and then the zucchini, squash, and mushroom medley. And then these two have the chicken, the rotisserie chicken that's cut up. It has that in it with the broccolini and also the um, mushrooms and rice. So that's what that is. And the zucchini and squash medley, like I said, and three shrimp in each one. So that is that. That's five meals plus two lunches or quick meals. And then also I have something um, in case my husband wants something for lunch. I had some leftovers from the meatloaf and things. So he'll have enough for lunch. Um, Jalen usually eats uh, different things for lunch. She doesn't generally eat like dinner food for lunch. She eats like a lunch lunch most of the time. And Isaiah is usually at work. So he eats there. So anyway, that is it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something from it. Let me know if you try to make the meal prep you know, meals for a week or a couple of days or whatever. Let me know if you do and let me know which meals you make. You don't have to make the same ones that I do. Of course, you can make whatever you want, whatever your family likes and, you know, make it ahead. That way you can either put it in the refrigerator or you can freeze these. You can freeze these. They're freezer safe and they keep their air tight and they last for about two to three months. I've never kept them that long. But many other people that meal prep say that. All right. This is the first day of us eating our meal prep. And it looks really good. Just warmed it up for about two and a half minutes. So Jalen ate a late lunch. She's not hungry and Isaiah's not here. So it works for us whenever you're ready to eat. We're still going to, of course, eat family dinners. But um, it just helps in a pinch when everybody's going different directions or a couple are going in the same direction and others going different directions or not ready to eat or something that happened. We got food ready. Also, you guys, I wanted to take a moment and tell Laura... Thank you. Laura is one of my dear subscribers. I just love you so much and I appreciate you for sending me this knife. It is a what, now I can't pronounce it too good. I believe it's German, but what's Hof? Classic. And if for some reason I can find this on Amazon, you guys, I will link it below in the description box because you will want this knife. It is, it is sharp. Laura, I don't know what I was doing quite before. <laughs> I guess that's why you sent it to me. Because <laughs> you saw you said it, you saw that I was struggling with the onions. So oh my goodness. I love this knife. My this knife sailed through everything. Just chopped through everything, sliced through everything with ease, like like butter. Just like butter. I love it. So thank you so much. And like I said, you guys, if I can find this on Amazon, I will put the link below because you definitely want to get this knife. But be very careful if you do. It is very sharp. Very, very sharp. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Also, this uh, garlic press I got on Amazon. You will love it too. I'll put the link below if I can find it again. I did purchase this one myself on Amazon. So like I said, I'll link it below if I can find it. Um, and then... 
this i will try to link below also on amazon if i can find the link this is the olive oil bottle which i love and then these containers here for your seasonings i love them i absolutely love them i'll link them down below too i purchased these on amazon so i'll link them down below um all i did was got some, some of that sticky paper or some of the paper you peel and stick and i cut it you know in these sizes because there's a certain you know length and width it's very small and they didn't send any labels with this or anything and then if you put labels here you're always touching and holding right there then you know it's easy to wear off or come off so i put mine up here all right so that's it all right so y'all be blessed let's check around on my channel there's plenty of other videos that i make there's vlogs how-to videos all types of videos so i would love for you all to become part of the tracy's place family hit that subscribe button smash that like button click that notification bell that way when i upload a video you will be notified each time all right y'all be blessed love you guys see you next time bye bye